Hey everybody, I'm going to do a quick video. Um, I'm going to start trying to do these videos a little bit more often where I just do commentary on some of the Nolan articles that stick out to me, especially ones that I think will help the franchise system. So uh, I woke up this morning and saw this article uh, from December 9th. It looks like it was just posted on the LinkedIn page of Nolan. And for those of you who aren't already following Nolan, it's the industry leading publication for the quick loop space. So um, follow them on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those places. It's the best place to get their articles as they come out. So um, great topic, fleet work. Um, I'm just going to go through the article real quick and kind of hit on some of the key points. Uh, I'm not familiar with Lindsay Gaynor. I know a lot of people over at Nolan, but um, I also know that they've been growing through acquisition quite a bit, and that's not a person I'm familiar with. But, um, you know, fleets obviously are something that we talk about during training. It's something that we talk about during the ramp-up period. It's one of the best ways to mitigate the ramp-up period is by finding those fleet customers. Uh, it looks as though this article is centered around um, a general manager, owner of a, uh, of a shop in Mississippi. And uh, the first thing that sticks out to me, you know, is, is the relationship, not contracts. And I think that's especially true with our business because it is a geographically restricted business. It's not, you know, the national fleet accounts are great and, and we will get those as we expand across the country. But for right now, seeking local businesses that have multiple vehicles is a much more practical and more quality customer than the enterprise fleet solutions or the WEX fleet solutions. So um, one thing that's interesting right here is uh, the, this very first sentence of the, of the next paragraph of the challenge, having a dedicated salesperson who works towards fleet. Uh, I can actually relate to that. We have attempted that in the past. We are most successful with doing fleet work when it was either me seeking the fleets or having our manager seek the fleets. Um, and, and that has been the best way for us to cultivate those customers. Um, and, and they stick a lot longer when you do it that way. Uh, if it's just a salesperson who's just like pounding through emails, cold emailing, it's not going to be as personal. When our managers are the ones who actually seek out those fleet accounts and talk to them about the area and say, you know, we saw your car drive by, we saw your van drive by, this is what we can offer for you. Um, that's, that's really good. And so, uh, this 10 to 20 percent number is is probably pretty accurate ours is probably a little bit lower um, this is a full car care clinic so it's a little bit different but I think that you know if you could build your fleet customers like so our Dillsburg store for example they have a, a very very large fleet customer that's a construction company with a hundred vehicles and and they probably are more than 20 percent of the business alone um, and you don't want to get like you know we have to take care of those guys really well because you start walking this fine line of does this customer have too much power what will happen if that customer goes away um, but that being said when you believe in the service that you provide you know that should never happen so um, you know going through this some of this stuff doesn't apply to us as a quick loop some of it does um, I, I do like this sentence when you deal with people never use tomorrow's money always use yesterday's I'm guessing that has something to do with net 30 billing which is a, uh, a selling point that we use to get fleet accounts because we it, it's easier for accounting to do net 30 billing we have an invoicing system that is electronic so we don't send out paper invoices anymore and that kind of has done away with having to chase money the electronic invoices send automatic reminders on a regular basis so it's not as difficult as before like when I first did fleets in 2014 2015 I'd have to handwrite them on a carbon copy rip the top one off have the driver sign it rip the top one off mail that one to the shop keep one ours they would mail the check in with the top piece and then we'd have to go through that whole reconciliation process now it's as simple as hey what's your company email address to send invoices to okay here's the invoice then they pay digitally but net 30 is still a uh, a good incentive to get fleet customers but to uh, this gentleman's point you know it's if they can pay up front if they have a company credit card that's always better so um, and then he just talks about fleet relationships should be the same as your regular customers and I agree with that everyone should be treated the same everyone should be treated with the best service possible and um, you know fleets 
as we talk about extensively, are the easiest ways. It's one of the best ways for the franchisees, especially if you're working semi-absentee, you are you got time at home to start reaching out to local businesses to say, hey, we're new to the area. Would, you know, We have no appointment oil changes, especially these companies that rely on their vehicles being on the road to make the money, whether it's HVAC, plumbing, uh, electricians. If their cars are tied up in a bay for appointments. I see it a lot online. I talk to a lot of these operators. You know, the no appointment oil change thing is a huge, huge, huge plus for them. Um, and a lot of them have come to me and they're like, okay, we've thought about doing mobile mechanics. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's that's a bad idea because that's that's not going to work price-wise. It's not going to work job site-wise. The mobile, the mobile mechanic fad that seems to have popped up lately I think is fleeting. There have been mobile oil changes since the 70s, actually. Before the quick lube industry was a thing, there were mobile oil changes. It's never panned out. Um, there's logistical reasons for it. There's inventory reasons for it. There's environmental reasons for it. But, um, but from our perspective as the brick and mortar operator, we can create that community built around our shop uh, as well as those fleet customers to say, hey, we're going to take care of your business if you take care of ours. So that's really it for today, guys. Uh, hope uh, that was insightful and looking forward to doing more of these.